So anywho, let's explore that idea like I just said. We already went through Zuma, where his personality is a very go-with-the-flow kind of personality like the ocean. But let's compare the other pups. With Chase, he has a very mature personality and is able to think ahead. But at the same time, he's someone who's respected and is able to be in charge. And because of this, he has that kind of personality. Then again, he's still a pup himself. But he's not afraid to take charge and be mature when the situation calls for it, let alone being serious and trying to make sure that everything goes right. Because of this, Chase fits the role of a police pup almost perfectly. Now, let's go to Marshall. With Marshall, despite the fact that he's clumsy and a goofball, he does have a quality that also separates him from the others. Even though everyone wants to help out the town, Marshall does it with enthusiasm. There's a sense of passion with Marshall, just like a fire. A fire burns or can be put out as long as it has all the qualities that it needs or rather requirements in order to burn. And so many people use the expression that when someone is passionate, they have the drive. They have the fire for something that they enjoy. With Marshall being passionate about not only wanting to do a good job, but knowing his job is important because it helps others out. A passion for wanting to help out others because he knows that it will benefit everyone in the long run. As well as taking a situation seriously given how dangerous fire can be. Hold on. Whoops, too close. Sorry about that. But as I was saying before, Marshall has a sense of passion for wanting to help out others and making sure that everything is okay. In both qualities, Marshall demonstrates a firefighter perfectly. He's not just being a firefighter for the job. He's doing it because he's passionate about helping others that are in danger, as well as having just... A love for the job himself. Marshall loves his job because he knows that even though it is dangerous and he has to take situations seriously, he has no problem doing that. Because he knows in the end that if things work out, everyone's lives get better over time, as well as helping those that are in need. Marshall just has this natural passion for wanting to help out others, but also making sure that it's done in a safe way. That passion for helping others is very fitting for a fire pop. So, so far, sorry, so, so far, Zuma, Chase, and Marshall fit the roles that they were given. Now, let's go with Rumble. What about his backstory? Well, if you've seen the episode Pups Get a Rumble, we already have an idea of how he joined the team. But, there's a certain moment that not only describes a bit of his backstory, but also describes a quality about him that the others don't have. In Pups Get a Rumble, we see that Rumble is both in size and potential age, much smaller and younger than the other pups. And when they give him food, they are surprised by how much food he's eating and how fast he eats it. And what is their response? They comment how hungry Rumble is. And when he, they ask him when he last ate, his answer is days. 
They are shocked and even make the comment, you haven't eaten in days? That was Rocky, by the way. And Rommel responds with, that's what it's like when you have to take care of yourself. Then the pups gasp again because they are so surprised that a pup so young as Rommel is living on his own. Then they, uh, then Marshall asks, you live on your own? And Rumble responds with, sure, I'm a tough pup. Grr. But although that last remark that I'm a tough pup, grr, could easily be seen as Rumble, sorry, could easily be seen as Rumble just trying to lighten up the mood. What if that one bit of dialogue is actually a bit of his defining trait? We see Rumble dig Jake out of the snow boulders, so he has the skills to be a construction pup. But look at it this way. If you're a young pup like Rumble and have to take care of yourself, and live in a world where you have to take every opportunity because you never know if you'll get another opportunity like that again. Whether it be getting a new toy, getting food that you want to eat, getting a drink of water, shelter, finding friends, finding comfort in something that you're afraid of. Looking at it from Rumble's point of view... That is not easy for a pup of his age. And I point this out because of how young he was in that episode. So because of this, Romu had to be tough to not just get through daily situations that he had to deal with alone, but to get through it at a young age. Rumble had to be tough in order to go through life before meeting up with the Palm Patrol. In other words, he had to be tough, just like a rock is, just like a boulder. Even though you can make the argument that rocks and boulders can break under certain amounts of pressure or objects hitting them, they have to be tough because if not, they would break all the time. A mountain has to be tough because it has to sustain a variety of environments for animals that live there. And if it doesn't, then those animals have to find a new home. The idea of rocks, boulders, and mountains having to be hard and tough as well as having to get by them, especially for mountains, the idea that you have to be well prepared during a mountain hike or climb and know what you're doing, otherwise it's going to be a tough ride. The fact that you need to be tough perfectly fits Rubble's situation. And when you add in his digging abilities... It's no wonder that R that Ryer decided to give him the role of a construction pup. In addition to this, he even overhears that conversation from the balcony of the lookout. So it's not that hard to see why that story could have also played into his decision making. So it really is quite an interesting point of view. Now, let's go to Rocky and Sky. With Rocky, he's always recycling objects, whether people think that the object is just useless or just something that you can throw away or recycle one way or another. But with Rocky, every opportunity that he takes to recycle or reuse an object, he just does it. He doesn't care if the object is something that's really flimsy or something old, like a pipe that's been, you know, used so much that it's bent or broken. Or a pipe that's been aging so much that it gets oxidized and there's rust on it. 
or other items like a sock or a balloon or just anything in general that he can use. With Rocky, he actually represents, in a sense, the Earth. Because think about it this way. Given all the hardships that we humans have had to put Earth through, from deforestation, more CO2 in the air, oil spills in the ocean, animals losing their habitats and going extinct, as well as animals having to also adapt and get used to changes in their environment, with all this in mind, doesn't this sound like Rocky? Mother Nature has had to adapt to changes that humans have put onto her, regardless if they're positive or negative. In fact, a perfect example of a keystone species is the gray wolf in Yellowstone National Park. Why do I point this out? Because when the wolves were taken out of the park, the environment changed dramatically. There was far more game animals like moose and deer and elk that were eating up plants. So much so to the point that certain plants couldn't even regrow without getting eaten. And because of this, it affected everything in the environment. But when the gray wolf got returned to the Yellowstone National Park, things improved for the better. The game animal population reduced down to a number that was sustainable where the number of deer, elk, and moose didn't affect the environment as much compared to when the gray wolves weren't there. Plants were able to grow when they weren't able to. The soil quality got richer because of how many plants were able to grow again. The water got richer because beavers were able to return back to the river and create their homes. Because of the gray wolf, all of these factors in the national park changed for the better. But even if you don't include that example, Mother Nature always has to adapt. It has to change. It has to take opportunities to go with the flow in regards to changes in the environment. Mother Nature, with human interactions, isn't given much of a chance in order to make it so that way she can do everything she wants, so that way the, the homes out in the wild, regardless of its soil, water, trees, animals, whatever, Mother Nature can't just do the same thing over and over again when there's drastic changes to the environment. So what does she do? She has to change. She has to figure out other solutions. She has to adapt. Just like with Rocky. He doesn't just take a piece of an item or items like I mentioned before with the pipes. He doesn't just take them and get rid of them. He keeps them in case they can be used for something else. He adapts an object so that way it fits into the role of another job. It perfectly describes Rocky. And because of that, it's no wonder why he's the recycling pop. He's doing a smaller version of what, ma what Mother Nature does every single day. Now, let me do Sky real quick. What about her? Well, let's look at her qualities. She's fearless. She's super enthusiastic. She enjoys flying. She enjoys anything that just gets her in a good mood. She does backward flips. She's someone who has this bubbly, upbeat personality who's just always like that unless the chips are down. And this is interesting because think about the air. Even though there's currents in the air and weather changes, there's still this pleasantness when it comes even to the weather. It never changes its beauty. It still tries to stay positive. Just like Sky does. I'll continue this in part four.